was uh, pretty well ahead. Um, I mean, Sex Criminals is kind of the exception. Yeah. But even still, like, we're doing a print of the... You see Todd, you buy Todd. Where's Ghost Avengers? Where's Ghost Avengers? There's only one mantra that you all need to know. That's that one over there. See Todd, buy Todd. Welcome back to the West Coast Avengers. I'm Dave. Or you want to really talk real fast. I didn't do a lot of cool games. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the West Coast Avengers. My name's Dave, and you are here to hear about Emerald City Comic Con. But first, there's more. It's not sold in any... Okay, I'm not going to do the... Please comment, like, subscribe, all that stuff. I've got a new podcast, Direct Edition. It's available on all streaming platforms, including YouTube. The links are down below, or you can just follow Direct Edition on YouTube. It's going to be an expansion of everything I like to talk about. Not just comics, but music, movies, interviews, and just, uh, you know, what's going on in life. You know, we got to talk about life. we got to talk about our feelings, our emotions, our mental health, all these things. So, follow Direct Edition. All right, so I went to Emerald City Comic Con uh, 2024. Uh, I went Thursday and Friday, the first two days. Now, a uh, preface on that. I used to go to Emerald City Comic Con probably starting in 2015, right after I moved here. And homeboy Dave Korea would come and set up at Emerald City Comic Con. He'd stay in my apartment because it was six blocks away from the convention center. I actually don't think it's worth the money. It is a very expensive Comic Con that has about 10 to 15% of comics at a Comic Con. And then maybe 25% of Artist Alley is is the other part of the con. Everything else, it's all gaming and Funko Pops and celebrities and this, that, and the other thing. So, it is not a pure Comic Con. It hasn't been for years. And I'm not upset at that because I knew that going in. But I will say this. Emerald City Comic Con, if you're watching this, maybe when you set your parameters to give out free content creator passes... Asking comic content creators to have a quarter million subscribers across all platforms is basically just saying, hey, if your comic tropes and cartoonist kayfabe and maybe like two or three others, they get free passes if they want them. Just saying, maybe if you want to put more eyes on the Comic-Con, you give people that have a growing audience. Anyway, I actually had a great time. The new convention center in downtown Seattle that was built, I finished, I guess it was, I finished it. It was finished two years ago. And uh, it's really nice. It's spacious. It's it's beautiful. It's, it's very sleek. You know, it's very easy to get to if you live in Seattle, especially if you live in walking distance. I really was just going to see a bunch of creators to see friends and buy, buy some stuff. It's an expensive convention to exhibit at as a, as a dealer. So all the prices are jacked up. It's just the nature of the beast. And you know, some a little bit too high. I see a couple of dealers that were selling Lethal Protector number one for 50 bucks, Spawn one for 80. Ugh. I took as much footage as I could. My battery ended up dying. I use a GoPro, so sometimes the camera gets a little wonky. So enjoy me walking around, talking to a couple people. I was, uh, I did ask everybody if I could film looking through their art and stuff like that. So nobody was uh, going to be blindsided at, at any of the footage if they come across it. But uh, yeah, here's Emerald City Comic Con 2024. <laughs> Cool. All right, so where are we going? What are we doing? What's your goal for today? Um, go back to Artist Alley. Uh, let me check my list to see see who I haven't seen that I wanted to see. Clunan and, and Tula uh, won't be here until noon, so we'll be setting up pretty soon. And I'll pop down to the, the show floor and because I mean you 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 probably spent enough time with me in comic shops to know uh, I could take my time. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> with things. Did um, you dig through books at all? Not yet. Not yet. So I'm. I'll, oh yeah, yeah. He's down here. Yep. And the biggest person in the room. 
So, you know, the, the OAX video was overwhelmingly positive. Chip Zdarsky doing sad Spider-Man. And I mean, after his life story, I guess he has the right to be sad. Yeah, I really fucked over this guy, didn't I? He's so good, though. That was a... You know, I took... I, Full disclosure, I used to work for the CBLDF, and that ended, and then the pandemic hit, and I took like a year off of comics, and the first thing I read when I decided to look at a comic book again was Life Story. Oh, wow. And so that and Silver Surfer Black both hold a, uh, a special place in my heart. I started looking at stuff that I, I had never read before. And so the beautiful thing about comics is that, like, if you're not happy with what you're currently reading that's currently coming out, there's a hundred years so to go back and pick uh, from to find another yeah, book. Yeah, like, you know, different countries producing comics. Like, you know, I got into manga pretty mm -hmm. early. Yeah. And, and like, like, oh, suck. That kind of rekindled a love for the cloud. I had never touched a, uh, a Klaus book up until about a year and a half ago. Oh, really? And now I'm like one book away from reading everything he's ever written. Oh, man. Yeah, Klaus. Did you read? Uh, did you read Monica? Monica, I love it. Oh my god, it's yeah, insane. I, it is. I just finished it the other day, and I'm like, I, I need to process it. Yeah, and you need to read it twice. You need to come back yeah, to yeah. it. He's so good at just like creating a full character. Yeah, like all the weird little details. You're like, oh man, you really, you, feel, you really understand. Feel like you know them by the time you're done reading them, even if he sent you down like a a wormhole that makes no sense. Yeah, uh, and you come out of it. I'm like, well, what just happened? But wait, I feel for that character. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it is a, a lost art of, like, the fact that long runs by an artist don't really exist anymore. No, and the market just can't support it because, like, no. I don't know, like, Jorge wants to draw every issue of Batman. Sure. He is very fast. He draws a page a day, no problem. But we put out, like, 20 issues of Batman a year, you know? But some, yeah. Some of them are super long, mm -hmm. like, so it breaks his heart because he can't do it. Yeah. Like, there's so few, because usually if an artist of a higher caliber, they want you on those big books, and those big books need, like, so many issues coming out. It's really hard. Uh, there's always the argument, like, I'd rather have Hi, 10 issues with one artist oh, and, you know, yeah, then 13, 14 with multiple. Right. I think it burns the book. But ultimately, like, they need to make a certain number of sales to keep the lights on at the company. I'm, yeah, from the outside looking in, it's just like, why do they do this? But, like, once you realize how close to the bone things are financially, and it's worse now because the cost of paper has gone up so much. Yeah, yeah. The distributor take is higher because of gas prices. So it's like, a book... The whole machine costs more. Back then, now I'm making like a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. Like, like the margins are getting so thin. But like the... Uh, with the same number of copies sold. But do you do well with like the big hard sex criminals, like the trades and stuff like that? Um, I mean, sex criminals is kind of the exception. Yeah. Even still, like we're doing a print of the... Of everything, right? We're doing like one volume of soft cover. And I did the math and I'm like... If a few years ago we just took the six volumes and printed them individually, taped them together and sold them to you, it would cost me less than to print one wow. edition map. So like the, the profit margin is gone because like the cost to produce is so high. I mean, is the solution, I don't know. I don't know what, there's no single solution no, no obviously. Solution. Like, like the solution.
think it's easier to turn off. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, David, that's cute. I like that. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense now. Yeah, when, when I, I mean, when my friend, like, sometimes my friends are like, Devengers, I'm like, you know my name. It's Dave. It's Devengers. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, please, please. So do you still own most of the pages from yeah almost all it's it's the uh it's the graphic novel paintings are the ones that you sold the most yeah, of right the covers and the uh yeah, yeah. Paintings. maybe covers and get up to things can we expect an artist edition soon uh actually uh we're talking about it i mean it's the perfect time for it because I feel like all the good ones have been coming out in the last like five, ten years. Well, there was a large edition for uh, Usagi from Dark Horse. Oh, yeah. They called it Gallery Edition. That's right. That's right. Very tough to find. I only, I've only seen one copy once, and it was not cheap. government funds yeah. promises a lot of pro empty promises that's why they don't have all the good stuff's gone why i mean it's only thursday yeah no and then the question rises was there anything good here to begin with <laughs> cue the x-files theme <laughs> Oh my god, this is the Conan shit that they went over on Kayfabe a couple of days ago. That's like the worst comic of all time. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to. Got a healthy dose of magazines too. Hey, you doing great? How are you? What's up? Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. What's up, Randy? How hey, you how doing? you doing? Good. Did you bring your magazine stash? No, this is all 1980 and above. All right. All right. All high grades. So if you got list to complete, we would have to have some 80 stuff and just have to get it, not get a hold of her. Not much of a show of it, but you can tell me it's three bucks so each, each, four for ten. They're, they're all high grade. Right, right on. To be any uh, um, uh, amazing heroes or any of the fanzines or anything? I'll get to those later. I'll have those out eventually. Right on. 
Some of those, you gotta, you gotta look at them closer because some are actually worth money, some aren't. Yeah, and there's some great, there's great uh, articles in there. And interviews and articles. Oh, yeah. Stuff was, that, uh, you know, back all in the, the 70s and 80s, they were awesome. Because it comes up all the immediate you know, way one really title fights on the internet. Yeah, no, it was the only way to, to learn about all these artists. Really, the greatest thing we could do that. No, no, we have an answer. There's good stuff so, there. Uh, it's not worth that. It's not worth those those characters will be popular until we're dead. Yeah. You know. Oh, okay. Well, it's funny because like this when I turned 21, a buddy of mine oh, had nice Todd hat. signed "Happy 21st yeah, Birthday." That's, that's one of my cool. Spawn number one. And I'm like, it's cool that he did that. That's yeah. Awesome. I was like, if I see him again, I gotta have him put like "Happy 50" yeah. something yeah, yeah. on it. So, you know, <laughs> that's like, a great idea, it's, actually. It's, yeah, yeah. It's just just like, keep yeah, adding, yeah. adding to yeah. the the birthday. Yeah, if he's ever on a show again. <laughs> exactly. but, like, yeah, that is a great idea. Works, yeah. Because these are so bulky too, it's like, uh, <laughs> you know. Oh no, I'm like trying to look at shit, and I'm like, I gotta put down my purse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> you too. Yeah, see, you got a purple purse. Where's the ASM? Is there uh, ASM? Back. Yeah, right, right over there. Oh yeah. We got a jewel hunter. Sorry, I'm looking at that. No, pass. Like, no. no. Oh, sorry. Yeah? Yeah. How are you guys doing? Whoa. Oh, that's true. Art of art. Oh, Neil Adams. I mean, I, that's the exact same thing I thought. Art of art. I have never seen this before. I have a hard cover of that. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a hard cover of that, but not that size. Oh, that's. This was re released by Image, wasn't it? Uh, it's not Image, the, the one that I have. Oh, okay. I don't think so. Sounds like you just made that name up. <laughs> it doesn't sound like a. Are real you name. in? Are you into Brundage? <laughs> no, I'm into bondage. No Brundage. This sounds interesting. It's, it comes from my uh, my high school experience of uh, doing impromptu and speech and debate. Mm. Well, you no have shit. Five minutes to like pretty much break down the entire history of one topic. <laughs> oh, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. That's why you're good at that. Otherwise, I'd pick that up. Yeah, it's a pretty cool. Oh, cool. yes. fuck. I didn't know Charles Burns did a Death oh. Rattle cover. That's cool. Underrated series. Now people are starting to get uh, keen to it, and it's very interesting watching people. I, I kind of noticed that. I have noticed people... Uh, those yeah, I mean, I've both of those, um, the Death Rattle and the Xenozoic Tales, like those are like forever dollar books that are now not dollar books. Well, I, I think 
think it's gonna. You know, the, the stuff they were talking about earlier, you know, more of like the underground stuff, fancy. The more people become aware of lesser known things, those are gonna be the things that people are like, oh shit. Oh, of course. How did we not know about this? And, that, and then everything. Put all these books, everything slides out. They put like two or three books together. Mm -hmm. Are they closer? Is that where they're based out of? Up there? They must be out of Canada. Are you guys right. out of Canada? Right. You got right. Okay. I always feel like we're, the big show we would do at Bellingham when you guys go. Yeah, no, no. Is that the one where you guys bring like when you get? Yeah, just the blowouts. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I hunt for. All right, okay. Literally all I, I look for is that. How much? That is a, a great deal. Unless, unless there's no book in between the cover, that is a fantastic deal. Ain't bad. JFK, of course they are. JFK up at the top. Oh, did you bring sets or no sets? No, we didn't bring any of the blowouts. Somebody else okay. I don't know how to say it in Japanese, but I do know how to say it in English. When you see Todd, you buy Todd. Where's Ghost Avengers? Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I mean, when we were um, trying to think of like what what they would look like, I went in and just did like smooth crop sketches of like a wolf and a panther and like a lion and like how to make them look different, but also like very similar. Yeah. So that was fun. You gotta move fast. I didn't go to yeah, okay, I do yeah that. this is the first issue, yeah. Yeah, thank you. I like to make my signatures look like. It's like the same royal glass and those are not in 20 years. It's similar to the way it can be with artists too. No, I've got so many. It's all my gold. There is, so. there are like points. Hey, how you doing? Okay. Uh, the, this is the picture that we should be talking about. I'm okay with that. Those are five each. Okay, I went to the place for you. Yeah. This is the pile of You see them show up in a meeting here. That's good, Johnson. Yeah. 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 Stuck with the original. I was like, what? Uh, starting out with uh, a crossover, kind of somebody that I knew from Cartoonist Kayfabe, Eli Schwab and Cosmic Lion. He was there, and I ended up getting an Image Grand Design and a Wizard Comics magazine. So these are anthologies that were put together um, over COVID. And there's some great artists uh, in here, Craig C.K. and Barry Tan and Eli and some other great people. So this is just something that like fanzines and fandom and that kind of comics making is still alive and well. You know, guys that are trying to break in and indie creators doing stuff with other friends that they met online. It's the coolest fucking thing. I mean... This represents a huge part of what the 60s and 70s and 80s was like with guys like the studio, you know, Barry Windsor Smith and Bernie and Kaluta doing a lot of fan art uh, way before that anybody knew who they really were. And then after people knew who they were, they were still doing fan art. So it's, it's in the same kind of lineage of that.
So uh, big big shout out to Eli for hooking me up with some great stuff. I, there was some dealer downstairs that had some of the uh, that had some of the OG Usagi Ojimbo trades, and I have the OG ones, so I'm trying to keep all the spines to look the same. I love these kind of digest size trade paperbacks with the different color spines. So I just picked up uh, books five, six, and seven so I can read them, and then I'll get the others somewhere down the line. Speaking of Stan Sakai, here's that sketch. The sketch cover uh, and the blank and the sketch itself, I think I paid less than 100 bucks. He's such a nice guy. And the cool thing is about this, it's not even for me. You are looking at the first preview of the first raffle prize that will be raffled off during Dave Engercon this year. Mark your calendars, April 20th and 21st, 420. Uh... uh <laughs> I'm holding a, a huge charity raffle for the charities that I supported last year, the Laidler Music Money Foundation and the uh, Tiny Changes. So this will be part of that raffle. So thank you, Stan. I did get something for myself from Stan. We will look at that in a little bit. Just, you know, random stuff that I found. Uh, a Flaming Carrot number 17, the second appearance of the Mystery Men and the first cover of the Mystery Men. And then what I saw, you know, you know, it's me. You know, I love my Mark Jewelers. You know, I love hunting for them. Somebody had this out, a uh, little beat up, but I, I was looking at it. It was under a, a little showcase thing, but I kind of looked down and I saw the line. And that's, uh, it's a Mark Jewelers of the first Jason Todd is Robin. Uh, it's probably like a 6-0. Another Mark Jewelers I got was... House of Secrets, number 117. I'm not sure who does the cover on this one. It's not Bernie or Kaluta or Neil Adams. That I know. But speaking of Bernie, House of Mystery, number 217. Possibly the greatest Bernie Wrightson cover of all time with the tree that eats children. I love this book. I always buy it when I find it. Speaking of Bernie Wrightson, a book I've never owned and I've never seen in person, The Mutants. And this is, I think, the original... Um, format that it was released in by Mother of Pearl. I don't know what to expect from this, but I am excited to read it. Another Bernie-centric thing. Uh, Deja Vu magazine, number one. And this is from the studio. This is Jeffrey Jones, Kaluta, and Bernie. Never looked in this, but the front cover, that's right here. So this is a print that I bought from Heritage a couple months ago. It's called An Ode to a Scottish Prayer. And this is a signed Bernie print, and that's what's on this cover. So if you watch this channel for more than three seconds, you know I'm a huge Bernie Wrightson fan. The band released a lot of work in his life, uh, very prolific, uh, and we lost him you know, sooner than we wanted to, but he did leave behind such a, a beautiful and epic body of work. So I buy stuff whenever I find it, obviously. This thing, oh my God. I didn't know what this was. I just found it in a box. And I didn't even take it out. I said, okay, it's Japanese, it's Todd, it's got an OB strip, and it's cool and glossy. Now, I'm not going to do a full flip through of this, because I think we'll save that for another episode. But it's got gold foil on the cover. It's not just Todd art in here. It's a very cool Spider-Man uh, piece that I'm really excited to own. And I've already put uh, my friend Sean, Japan Book Hunter, on the hunt for another one. All right, so getting to uh, this. Ooh, let's do this. From that same dealer, I got a 1966 complete Marvel Donra set. This is the first ever trading card set for Marvel. So you've got your first ever Cap card, and you've got your first ever Spidey cards, and the puzzles on back. This is a very nice, like, the grade on these, they're all really fantastic. Um... Unfortunately, by the time you see this, possibly, this is going to be sold because uh, as of the, this recording, tomorrow evening, Sunday, March 3rd, I guess, uh, me and Manu and our friend Ryan, RMS, are doing a live card sale right here on the channel, which will probably happen every couple months, depending on my supply of cards. I bought it with the intention to have it ready for the card sale tomorrow. Now I'm showing you the second preview raffle item for... Dave Engercon, Spider-Man Life Story, Chip Zdarsky, Mark Bagley, one of my favorite Spider-Man books of all time, and Chip was nice enough to do a little doodle as well as sign the interior title page. So this is going to be a uh, raffle item for Dave Engercon. I told him that, and he thought that was really cool. Eric Powell was there, and if you don't know Eric Powell, he created the character The Goon. Uh, kind of falls in with, if you're a Hellboy fan, you'll enjoy The Goon. Uh, it's something that I read when it 
first came out uh, maybe a decade ago or so. I think I spent a period of, you know, whatever came out and now the next seven years I kept reading. Great book. Uh, if you've ever, if you've never read The Goon, please pick it up. It's funny and it's, it's monsters and it's fighting and it's fun. But this is a book he did with Harold Schechter. Dear, did you hear what Eddie Gain done? Uh, and obviously Ed Gain was, uh, <laughs> he was a serial killer. Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Psycho are both based off of his, uh, crimes. And so I don't know anything about this, um, this book. Like, I don't know anything about this book. All I know is that Eric Powell did it. And so I had Eric sign a copy and I'm excited to read this. And it's nice to go in kind of almost blind, so to say with this book. So uh, he's a great guy if you've never met him before uh, and he's at a con. Go say hello to him. Fantastic illustrator. Uh, big comic fan. Big comics fan. We spoke about uh, The Goon because about a decade ago, David Fincher had opted to do or opted it and wanted to do a animated series and they did some test footage of it. I believe it was on YouTube, and I, I asked him about it because I had asked him about it 10 years ago, the first time I met him, and uh, he just talked about Fincher, and like he spent one day meeting with him, and he said something like, just hanging out with him for one day made me a better writer. And that's, you know, if you don't know David Fincher, Seven, Fight Club, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, Social Network, uh, Mank, The Killer, The Game, Panic Room, etc., my, one of my favorite directors. And so uh, it was nice to talk to Powell about that. Maybe I should have asked him if he wants to come on the show and we could talk about more David Fincher. Uh, now we get to what I'm most excited to talk about. Maybe you will be too. Art. Uh, I went, obviously, to the con with the intention to snag some original art from certain creators that I knew that were going to be there. I didn't realize that Zadarsky was doing sketches and he did um, your choice for 50 bucks or his choice for 20 for 40 and so since we were talking about uh spider-man and life story he did sad spider-man i i love it and uh with any luck i'll have chip on the program pretty soon tula lote and becky clunan were both going to be there and so becky and tula were there because they were are about to just finish up their book that they did with distillery called somna and the second issue's out now third issue's coming out at the end of the month but it's my favorite book of this year and last year it is a not for the faint of heart. If you are offended by nudity and sex, do not read that book or witchcraft. Uh, it's an erotic folktale. Horror folktale. It is the horniest book I've ever read. And it's fucking beautiful. If you haven't read it, check it out. They both split the art duties. They both wrote it together. Um, Tula didn't have her pages. She didn't have too many pages from it because her luggage got lost. But there was a piece that I was eyeing for a while um, that she had. And it, she does a lot of private commission movie posters. And so I bought this uh, piece that she did of Robert De Niro, De Niro from Heat. And it's part of a movie poster that she did. Do I need to say anything about the movie Heat? If you've never seen it, greatest heist movie of all time. The heist scene at the end of the movie is one of the most perfectly constructed movie scenes of all time. So I picked that up from her. Becky had pages from all three issues of Somna, even though the third one's not out yet. Now, I previously bought this page from the first issue, and they are twice up. They are huge. They are 16 by 20 uh, or 16 by 22. So that one I had previously purchased. Now, I can't show you the third page I purchased from her because the book's not out yet. But... I got this from issue number two. And when I read issue number two, I'm like, I'm getting this page. And here it is. And I own it. Such a beautifully detailed stained glass piece. Just look at it. Uh, yeah, but I do have another page. I can't show it. I'll just show a little. There you go. There's there's the bottom of the page from the third issue. Uh, so I can't show that. I promise that I wouldn't. And I don't break my promises. So it was great. Uh, I'm trying to get Becky and, and Tula, uh, whose real name is Lisa, on the show together before the third issue comes out. Um, it's going to be kind of hard because, uh, well, Becky lives in, in the Northwest, but uh, Lisa lives in the UK. So either way, look forward to speaking to one, if not both of them, on the channel. Uh, the last piece I bought, I literally, I waited till I bought those pieces from Becky uh, to see how much cash I had left. And I made a decision because... The man's a legend and I had to buy something 
from Stan Sakai. And he had these pieces that he just kind of did for the show. They're just, you know, commissions. And, and I talked to Stan and I said, which one should I buy? <laughs> you know, joking around. And he pointed to the $10,000 painted cover. And I said, well, okay, I can't go that high. But um, this is great. I paid 600 bucks for it. And Stan's such a great person. And he's he's a legend. I mean, Usagi gets to celebrate 40th anniversary this year along with the Turtles. And, you know, they kind of go hand in hand. I wouldn't have known uh, about Usagi if it wasn't for the figure that they did for uh, TMNT. I turned the experience into a, a great two days for myself. I got to see some friends. Shout out to everybody I, I got to say hello to and everybody that said hello to me. I just wish that it was more of a comic-centric con, like, or at least 50%. I understand everybody's got to sell their crafts and their shirts and their gaming cards and their video game, but stop calling it a comic con then call it a pop culture con and so that that's all i really my my complaint about it is maybe label it correctly all right well uh once again like it comment what was your favorite thing that i picked up if you saw me in you know say hi here if you didn't say hi at the con and uh don't forget to subscribe to the podcast direct edition and i'll see you next week on another one of the ways <laughs> Fuck, I totally forgot the format of this video.